and you could see that the lines appear. This is not an extension, it is just a settings that you can toggle. Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is some recommended settings and I think there's a lot of people on the comments section who's asking how you get this extension where you can see the lines that is tagged to a widget and you could see the different widgets being tagged with these lines. So I'm going to share that settings at the end of the video. So watch out. So actually, the Dart and the Flutter team, I don't know who did it, but they have recommended settings. So I'm going to explain to you the different recommended settings that I think is a very, very useful. So they have all of these settings over here. And what you can do is you can just copy this whole thing, or I just copy this whole Dart settings over here, because I also like to see the comments. And you can go to your settings.json, and you can paste it over here. So you could see there are different settings that I'm going to explain how some of them work. I'm not really going to go through most of them. So the first one is editor format on save and editor format on type. So format on save is pretty simple. When you save a file in Dart, for example, I have an extra line over here and I command save it or control save it, it just formats it. So I think most IDEs or Visual Studio Code settings has a default setting to just have save on format. If not, then for the Dart language, it does for you. The next thing is editor.format on type. So it formats when you type the semicolon or this curly brackets. I have two statements on the same line. So imagine if I were to create, for example, final is a dark variable, and then maybe I will say false. And once I put the semicolon, it helps me reformat the long ass line into two different lines, which is pretty cool. So you don't really have to save it, but you just have to put semicolon. All right. The next thing is editor.rulers. Oh, this is my favorite rule because it says draw a guideline at 80 characters where Dart's formatting will wrap the code. So it will actually draw a line. As you can see over here, it's quite faint. So this is a line that actually helps you format your code or I would say make your code clean. So the thing is, if you were to have so many widgets wrapped around each other, it will definitely be more than 80 characters and then you have to force yourself to actually refactor them into individual widgets that's my favorite so like for example if you have a variable that's very very long and if you save it you could see that it's being pushed so you have a visual understanding of where to refactor and such okay so the next thing is editor selection highlight and what this selection highlight does is for example, if I have a is dark variable, and the thing is, I just want to highlight is dark. However, if you have a class that is also for some reason called is dark, which is not a great name for a class, and let's disable this setting. So the thing is that if I were to highlight this is dark, it actually highlights the class itself. So the dark extension is not being used correctly. So this is something very annoying for me. So with this setting, what it allows you to do is, so if I were to choose is dark, you could see that this class is dark is not highlighted. Even if I highlight on is dark, is, even if I highlight is dark over here, this variable is dark is not highlighted. I only can highlight the proper object that I want to change. For example, is dark. So if I do command D, it works. But if I were to do command shift L, it doesn't. Command shift L basically overrides the settings for some reason. With command D, you can actually see what's being highlighted for you, which is very, very good. So now lastly, what I think most people want to know is how do you get these dashed lines to show the different widgets? And it kind of look like a widget uh, branch, you know? 
So either you can go to settings.json where you can have this dart preview flutter UI guides. So what it does is whether to enable flutter UI guides preview. Then I also activated the UI guides custom tracking. So it hides the latency of waiting for the next flutter outline. So if I were to comment this out and save this. So if I restart my VS code, you could see that there isn't any lines to show where exactly my widgets and the children and ancestor widgets is. So another way for you to activate the UI guidelines is you can go to the settings. So you can either command comma and then you can type in flutter UI. And you could see preview flutter UI guide. So if I activate it in both, for me, I'll do, I'll do both. Then if I were to go to main.dart, it doesn't really happen instantly. So what you can do is you can restart your VS code. And you can open it up again. And you could see that the lines appear. This is not an extension. It is just a settings that you can toggle. So I think this is very helpful for you to see your children widget or the widgets that's being used inside a widget itself. And if you want to use this Dart recommended settings, right? You don't have to go to Dart code website. What you can do is actually open the shortcut menu, Command Shift P or Control Shift P, and then you can type in Dart use recommended settings. So if I did not have the Dart settings, so if I were to, for example, activate it by using Dart use recommended settings it will actually pop up a window that says recommended settings will return to the Dart section of your global settings. And then, yes, it just creates for you, which is pretty cool. So I want to share another settings that I disable. It is called auto import completions. So the thing is, this is very good if you have a very, 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 very fast computer. However, I don't. So this will actually make my computer lag if I were to do auto import. So I disable it and it makes my development way faster. Because what this auto import completion does is that it really runs through your pubspec YAML to see what kind of packages that you have installed and auto import for you or what files you have. And the thing is if you have a huge project will affect your computer performance. So yeah, this by disabling it and then just manually importing it, I think that's the better way. Thanks for watching. If you think this recommended setting is useful, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe and comment down below. What other settings that I have not gone through that tremendously help you in your Flutter or Dart development experience? So that's it. All the best and stay safe. Bye-bye.